Major precious metals, ticker symbol size, recently reached a major milestone and published a new resource calculation for its palladium and platinum project Skergard in Greenland. With the new resource came new CEO Anthony J. Williams, who will take major precious and Skergard through the next phases of development. Anthony, good to talk to you and thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Nice to be here. Now, before we begin talking about major precious, uh, please introduce yourself to your audience or our audience, that is, and shortly give us some background about yourself, please. Okay, my, my name is Tony Williams. I'm a mining geologist, graduated from London University Royal School of Mines many years ago, spent uh, half my career in industry. Uh, for 10 years, I co-founded and led the natural resource uh, team at a group called Yorkton Securities, Canadian Investment Bank. And during that time, Yorkton became one of the leading providers for exploration and development finance worldwide. Uh, since 1995, I've been chairman and CEO of uh, a mining finance group called the Dragon Group, with a, a variety of interests in, in mining investments around the world. And I've been responsible for bringing projects to production in Africa, South America, the former Soviet Union, etc. So I have a lot of experience in moving projects uh, along what I call the mine development cycle. Okay, well, that, I, I think that's uh, exactly what is needed here. Um, because uh, so far, uh, perhaps you could give us a bit, bit uh, short of a recap there, is um, what Major Precious is at is the resource they just, they just published the resource. Please give us an idea of what, what you achieved there, what the numbers are. Well, what, what attracted me to the project was the sheer potential si size of the deposit. Um, over the last uh, several months, uh, as the press releases indicate from the company, the company, along with its independent consultants, uh, SLR Canada, who are a major international uh, independent consulting group, has been uh, re-examining the geology and looking at uh, resampling uh, exploration core that took place over a decade ago. And that has been very successful. The geology has lived up to expectations. It's very well understood. The mineralization is, is very clear. And the historical sampling has, the current reassaying has verified the historical sampling. So much so that the, uh, an indicated and inferred resource was published uh, a few weeks ago. And that indicates the potential size that using a, a, a cut of grade as 1.43 grams of palladium equivalent and only using palladium prices of 17.25 per ounce, we come up with a huge uh, potential resource, um, over 5 million ounces of, of palladium equivalent uh, ounces in the indicated category and over 14 million ounces in the inferred category. So, uh, so that, 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 is the, that is the achievement of the last six months which really puts into perspective the potential of the deposit, which will now be tested during this summer program. Well, that was going to be my next question. What are the next steps? What, what are you aiming to achieve uh, the rest of this season or, or this year? Okay. The, over, in the next few days, the, the company will file a, a very detailed uh, 43101 report. I'm sure many of your audience are familiar with that, the Canadian regulatory requirement which will give more details and support the indicated resources and inferred resources already announced. In that, in that report, there's a recommended exploration program of over 15,000 meters of drilling, which will further verify the historical sampling. And of course it will upgrade inferred resources to indicated resources. And we're confident of expanding the deposit both laterally and at depth because uh, both laterally and at depth, the deposit and mineralization is completely open. Perhaps more importantly, we'll also investigate the resource potential for initial open pit in the northern part of the deposits. And the samples will be assayed for other platinum group metals, such as rhodium, which were not previously analyzed, as well as we will reanalyze a lot of the historic samples for these other platinum group metals. The other key element of the program is to test for additional credits of other critical minerals such as vanadium and titanium that occur in the deposit and have been demonstrated to have pretty consistent grades right across the deposit. And this not only gives us additional credits for saleable products, 
but also has an added potential to increase the mineable widths within the known mineralized horizons. Historical drilling has shown there is about a 45 meter thick mineralized package of which there are layered zones of palladium rich ore, gold rich ore, etc. In between are the occurrences of vanadium and titanium, etc. So if those can be proven to be of economic value, it will increase the potential mining width and of course has big implications for cost factors. So that's a, that's a rough summary. And the, the combination of all this phase one exploration and drilling, which was, will start in July and will take and culminate in around about October. And then the mining, reassaying and metallurgical studies, which will be completed in parallel, that will form the basis for uh, an updated mineral resource estimate, which we target in Q4 this year. Mm -hmm. Then that will lead on to a preliminary economic analysis, PEA, and that target is for completion in Q1 2022. And of course, this PEA will use updated metal price forecasts, which will then give a very clear determination of the potential for economic extraction. So that's a bit of a mouthful, but that's, that's what we hope to achieve over the course of the next several months. Well, it's, uh, it's a lot of work, as you said, uh, but uh, it, when, it, uh, when it's done, uh, you should know a lot more about the deposit, uh, to be sure, and in more detail, uh, which is always good. Um, now, it's a lot of work, as we said. Um, summer on Greenland isn't that long. Um, are your preparations advanced enough? Uh, do you have all the necessary permits in hand, for example? Yes, to, uh, to... we're very advanced in, in mobilization. Uh, I think there have been a couple of press announcements. You saw that uh, Air Greenland have been, have been engaged as, um, to provide helicopter support and uh, a company called Exploration Services to provide field logistics. And we'll be announcing shortly the, uh, the appointment of a, of, of a drilling contractor. And, you know, I, I won't say too much about that because it's not in the public domain yet, but I think it's generally known that we're, we're advancing. The, um, the ship that uh, we're going to use for the, um, uh, for the exploration base will anchor some 200, 250 meters off the, uh, off the coast of where the project is located in, in, the, in the adjacent fjord. And that's being re-equipped right now with a helipad and has accommodation for over 100 people. So it'll be a very environmentally friendly way to conduct this summer program. At this stage, we expect the ship, uh, we have to go through a numerous COVID uh, regulations, as I'm sure you're aware, mm -hmm. but we would accept that the, expect the ship to be uh, on, on post sometime in the last week of July, and we would hope early, early uh, sorry, f last week of June, and we would hope to commence the program in early July. Okay. Wow. So well-advanced mobilization, a lot has been achieved in a very short time. Well, that's certainly true. Uh, the releases came thick and fast, one after the other. Um, longer term, though, what are your plans for the project for the Scareguard? Uh, do you want to build mine there? Do you want to do a joint well, venture? I, 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 I think I've had a lot of experience of taking projects right the way through from exploration along the development cycle through feasibility, et cetera. Um, Quite often, uh, you, you'll see from lots of research, the, the, the junior company that discovers the deposit is not the one that puts it into production. Having said that, we're assembling an owner's team with all the skills to do that. And I think we're highly confident that once we take this through the PEA into pre-feasibility and onto feasibility, it will attract the attention of many of the world's major mining companies. Now, I'm not gonna second guess here what, what will happen, but it's certainly the company's absolute goal to remain independent and take this project through to the feasibility stage, which of course will add tremendous value to the deposit for all the stakeholders. Okay. Well, that's a clear cut uh, statement there and we'll see uh, how that goes and uh, who will come out of, the, out of cover and, and see uh, who is interested in, in the project once that's all done. Now, the new numbers have been out for a while on the market well, it reacted positively before the uh, real source was published, but then gave up most of those gains uh, afterwards. Where do you see the catalyst for the stock to move upwards in the next 12 months? Uh, in other words, why should investors take a closer look at the company and major precious metals at this point in time? Well, I think the company is at a pivotal point. With, with I think the filing of the 43 uh, 101 report will will underpin the will will demonstrate. To, to investors and, and perhaps to the, to the mining community at large, the potential for Scareguard. And this is just at the point in time when 
platinum group metals generally and palladium in particular are entering, in my opinion, into a super cycle, which is not only related to increasing metal requirements for catalytic converters as emission standards tighten worldwide, but also there's a growing application in, the, in what we might call the, the, the hydrogen economy, hydrogen fuel cells, carbon capture, et cetera. And palladium in particular, I would say is at the forefront as a green energy metal. And we have multi-element exposure to a number of the other critical metals, such as vanadium and titanium, as I mentioned, all of which are in an upro macro price trend. Now that, that's all well and good. So we're in the right space with the right project. But um, also we should not ignore the, geo, the strategic geopolitical importance of Greenland's mineral sector. Now this is already partially being recognized and attracting some substantial development financing from a, from a number of European agencies, as well as from the Exim Bank, the Export Import Bank of the USA, who've written some pretty substantial uh, LOIs recently for a number of other companies operating in Greenland. And don't forget, this is the large, this is without doubt one of the largest palladium gold deposits outside Russia and South Africa. And as the, the industry generally and the world in general rushes to decarbonization, you have to look at the problems that Norilsk has with its environmental issues. And even in South Africa, the very large producers there, they rely on electricity. Electricity in South Africa is produced by ESCOM, which has to be one of the dirtiest in, in, in a general sense, uh, electricity companies in the world relying completely on coal fire or virtually completely on coal fired power stations. So I think that as well as the merits of the project, the wider geopolitical significance of operating in Greenland is a big attraction, I think, for investors. But at the end of the day, it's the fundamentals of the deposit that people should look at. That here we have uh, that this existing resource has been done at, at palladium prices, a lot lower than today's prices. And the, while we may not see 3000 plus palladium for the rest of our lives, certainly palladium for the next decade is going to be in very strong remand, demand, not only from these existing uh, uses in catalytic converters, which are well known, but also in the new greener economy that's, that I think is developing. And the momentum for that in the mineral sector is, is tremendous. Uh, there have been some concerns recently about Greenland as a, as a, uh, a base for mining, but some very encouraging um, public statements in the last few days from, from um, the recently appointed Greenland Minister for Natural Resources, confirming that the new government is not anti-mining, it's determined to build a successful mineral extraction industry, and it will provide continued support for sustainable mining projects. And our company has excellent relationships with the Greenland authorities. And of course, we will maintain rigorous environmental and social standards, which we expect from everyone in today's resource sector. So many, many reasons to take a good hard look at uh, major precious metals right now, um, particularly as the, the pullback in the price, I think, gives, uh, you know, not for me to say, but in my opinion, gives a tremendous second chance of buying opportunities. Okay, well, thank you very much. That was a certainly comprehensive answer. And we'll uh, see how it goes. It's a good point you raised. Uh, uh, the concern in Greenland were about uh, the radioactivity or potential radioactivity with the rare earth uh, element. Well, yeah, that, that particular deposit, you know, the, the geology one, is the geology. It contains, yeah. it contains uranium and, uh, you know, that's what Mother Nature put there and that's what it, it is. We, we have none of that on, on our side. We have all the permits needed. We've had nothing but support from the government as we've gone forward. And of course, we will maintain these strict uh, environmental and social standards, which, which are de rigueur right now for any mining project anywhere in the world. Okay. Good to hear. Thank you very much for taking the time. And uh, we'll be sure to check in later uh, when this summer when the work is underway. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Look forward to updating you.